we are meeting today to talk about gluttony, overeating, excess, and the ideas <laughs> of, I think we were calling it holiday highlights and habits, thinking about ways that we're having to celebrate very differently this year and ways that are the same, the traditions we really found we care about and the ones that maybe we can't have let go of after all. Um, and one of the things we were mostly talking about is food. For a lot of us, holidays are all about the food. Wouldn't you say, Karen? Oh, what, oh. Yeah. This food seems to be the, the, the highlight for a lot of yes, people. Yes, it does. It really and when you is. think about holidays, they either first they say family and then they say food, or sometimes yes. they say food first and family second. Right. <laughs> yeah, there, you know, uh, food has so many traditions. In fact, I talked to Bob earlier. Um, I, my mother's uh, sugar cookie is 150 years old. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And in the original recipe used lard and buttermilk. Wow. Mm. Now, I don't use lard. I still use the buttermilk, though. So, and I have, I have made it every year. And uh, it, 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 it turns into a cookie party, a decorating party. And it's, it's a great tradition that I don't think anybody wants to end. And I don't think, well, I will, as long as I'm alive, I'm not going to allow it to end. So, so but we you have know, to reimagine this. We do have to reinvent that. But it just occurred to me, you could send boxes of cookies to kids or grandkids who are far flung and then do a FaceTime decorating together or a little Zoom thing like this. Um, because yesterday, my grandkids called me when they were eating, and they were extremely interested in what I was eating. And they kept, the, instead of showing me their faces, they were showing me their plates and the pies <laughs> and the goodies. <laughs> oh. um, but it was fun to be. And so you could decorate cookies together apart. And that's what we're planning on doing. That's yeah, really well, that's fun. clever. Yeah. So, because we cannot stop this tradition. No, that's a good one. 150 years is a good tradition. Yeah. That, keep passing it down. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But Are another... You, oh, go ahead, Ian. I was just going to ask Larry if he's if he was, has a traditional soup. A traditional soup? Yeah. Turkey soup? Oh, actually, well... Um, I just, you know, throw anything that's in the refrigerator in there. But my mother used to make uh, years ago with the turkey carcass uh, something called juk. It's a Chinese, um, uh, I guess you call it a soup, but it was really thick. She put, you know, Chinese ingredients in there, mushrooms and and um, sometimes some Chinese sausage. But right. you, you put a whole bunch of rice in there and it's almost like a gruel but it's a, a little bit more liquid but that's that was a tradition for years while my mom was living but uh, bunny and i basically just throw a carcass with the bones in there and you know uh carrots onions celery and um whatever herbs and spices we think we might need and it turns out pretty good <laughs> sounds like it sounds and here's bunny hi hey bunny hi bunny <laughs> oh, Karen, I thought of stormy weather. Okay, you got it, baby. You don't know what we're talking about just between the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. I'm not going to let it out. No. <laughs> Do I feel a song coming on? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> it's on the list for Wednesday. When oh, we there you go. Let me let me do a little advertisement. If you'd like to join us, you know, go to <laughs> come with us at ten o'clock for a, uh, our uh, uh, Zoom karaoke, and uh, it's in the newsletter. And this time we're singing songs about winter and uh, snow and everything winter. So cold, nice. big cold things. <laughs> oh, I can think of so many. Uh, that's good. <laughs> Okay, the okay, advertisement's over with. <laughs> Thanks, Bonnie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh gosh, but I, you know, one one thing I do am doing is I'm trying to because this holiday is so different from, you know, my sixty seven holidays, and I agree you you you're the in the same boat. Is that I'm trying to say embrace the difference instead instead of fighting it, I want to embrace it. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's a mindset. 
Yeah, it's a mindset. And and this like, well, maybe instead of a great big meal for a, either New Year's or whatever, uh, maybe just have appetizers. Mm -hmm. You know, finger food. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just trying to, or just pizza. <laughs> you know, just, just to embrace the difference and kind of go with it and have fun with it. And maybe do it. You know, Anne? Yeah. Um, Ann Brown, you're muted. Can you unmute? Oh, let's see if she knows how to do that. Another thing is like breakfast for dinner. Have you ever thought about that? That's kind of a oh, fun yeah. thing to do. Let's see if Ann's going to be able to find it. See the microphone, Ann? It's that red microphone. If you click on that, you'll unmute yourself. Barbara, you're muted too. <laughs> Our support person's muted. There you go, Barbara. Sorry. Um, if you bring your cursor <laughs> down to the lower bottom of the screen, sometimes in your mic, that little microphone icon and a band will come on. And there's a microphone in there that's got a red slash through it. Are you seeing that? There. There, there, there you go. go. Okay, thank you. I can't unmute people. I can only do the opposite. We, my family, um, celebrated um, yesterday with playing Yahtzee on Zoom. Oh, huh? There was How did that go? In, one in Sacramento, one in Seattle. I was here, and my mother, my daughter, was in the Bay Area. And so they, we've always played. Well, that was we've always played Zoom um, Yahtzee. So that's what we did. How did that's how did awesome. that work on a Zoom? Did you take turns by? How did you figure it out? I just did what they told me to do, and <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easy. I think I went into their website and picked it up there. Well, that's but great. I was just always there. Yes didn't have to do anything um nice but it was really fun to have something to do with three generations sure. yeah yeah yes. and to be able to keep a tradition going yeah 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 that's really that's sweet. wonderful yeah that's fantastic i yep. wanted to ask you a question i live at sure. madison house where we get our meals and unfortunately, lunch is served at 11 o'clock or 11 and 15. I have my lunch sitting on my table in my apartment. Do you mind if I eat while we talk? No, go right ahead. No. Oh. We had our board meeting the other day on Zoom and somebody was eating. He had a big glass of wine and he had an ear of corn, which we saw marching across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, this is a shared experience. I have a bowl of, <laughs> cup of really good soup, and I have um, a, a shrimp salad. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Go for it. That's good. You can just listen oh. in and, and not worry about it. I think we should all eat and drink with Anne. There you go, right? Uh, you go. Yesterday, <laughs> I was telling some of the people, yesterday we were... um. The knitters were knitting, and Rita had champagne already at two o'clock. So she was swigging away with her champagne. <laughs> <laughs> why wait? <laughs> yeah, why wait? And she decided because her family was gone and she was alone, she had a filet mignon and she had asparagus and she oh. just some things that she really cared about and liked herself. And her tradition was to start drinking early and have a good time. <laughs> cooking and, and put on the music that she loved. And I thought, what a great way to just go with it. As you said, Karen, yeah. it's like not yes. going to be the same, but it could be memorable in a whole yes. different way. Exactly. Exactly. Or get right. so, you know, toasted. Yeah. Yeah. Don't remember. No. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Inappropriate. Inappropriate. Sorry. Sorry, Senior Center. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, Reed can edit that one out. Yeah, okay? there you go. Yeah, he's good at that. He's, well, he always, he's always <laughs> hitting the edit button with me. So, 
There, that's hilarious. <laughs> so I was wondering about leftovers because we have a tradition. And in my family, I think that the leftovers are more important than the meal itself. But I've, for years, I make these little individual casseroles and there'll be like stuffing and then turkey and gravy and maybe a thin layer of that cranberry relish stuff. And then a topping of more gravy and then mashed potatoes on top, like a little shepherd's pie and vegetables in the middle there. So that you'd hit corn or a layer of broccoli or something. So they're kind of tall, but, um, but the kids just love that. And it's like, that's the tr big tradition. And Andrew actually called me and said, so mom, tell me how the layers go. And I thought, there's a tradition that's gonna be passed down, right? That <laughs> is sweet. Yeah. I love that. Yes. What do you like oh, to do, Bonnie? I know Lawrence, Larry said he's making soup. Do you guys do sandwiches and stuff too? Oh, we do, but um, yesterday, so we fixed our big dinner Lawrence and I are a second marriage, but we will have been married 36 years. And he's a great cook. But he, after he had my first Thanksgiving, he said, well, we're not changing that menu. So, <laughs> so that was a big compliment. So, um, but we fixed our regular big dinner. And then we took two to people who live here in our apartment building. And one lady came and picked up two, and we took drove one over to an, another gentleman. And so it was, uh, you know, like when you say embrace it or whatever, we were alone, but we were so happy. We felt so happy. We felt like we were making a difference for people that were alone. And, you know, it was a really uplifting day for both of us. So, nice. um, oh, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the gals um, who has been on at different times, but um, uh, she works for the um, um, volunteer. volunteer bureau or whatever, and they made 150 dinners and delivered them. And that was wow. huge. And anyway, she... <clears throat> When she came and picked it up, she said, well, I had nothing at home and I was just going to have to buy something on the way home. And, you know, you just feel like it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. In years past, yeah. we were able to go to like Sportsman Club and help do the community oh, dinners. But of course, they're not doing that this year. But they did. Yeah. I know they gave a bunch of money to Helpline so they could buy dinners and things. But there is something lovely about taking a plate. Well, I think like one group. Yeah. One group, uh, she said, you know, all these different groups worked on it. And then yesterday as they assembled, they also had, there were kids there and they were putting little car cards, you know, little cards that the kids had made, a little turkey with from their hands and tying them onto the things. And then she said the, the drivers, one of the nicest things for her was all the drivers, they were all came back and said, oh, thank you. This has just been the best thing because... You know, they were making a personal connection, and a lot of people got a good dinner, and yeah, that's nice. Excellent. That is nice. Yep. In sure. my little community, I live in the mobile home park, and there's 50 homes, and it's sort of a tradition, not everybody, but there's quite a little group of people who, um, if they make soup, they bring over, you'll find a little jar of soup on your porch, and then when you make soup, you... Oh, you know, so we swap it around and it's like, because usually, I don't know about you, but I cannot make less than a gallon of soup somehow. You can put this and that and the other. And by that time, you have more soup than you even right. want to think about. Yeah, right. But so you make they a big use pasta. yogurt containers or maybe a pasta jar or something like that. And just because you don't want to have give something that they have to take back. But um, but it's like takeaway soup day. I think that's so sweet. Right. But it's like you said, Bonnie, well, there's a real pleasure lovely. in sharing. That's yeah, yeah, that's a lovely thing, though. Very mm -hmm. nice tradition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you get all kinds of stuff that you never would have made, probably, or even thought about. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. When you do those, those layers, like the little shepherd pie, um, then it, is it on a... Is it what? What is it in? What is it well, on I'm, or in? Or right? let me show you. Oh, all right. <laughs> Can you see that little casserole dish? So that's it's probably a oh yeah, 
I'd say oh, it was like a, a three, four, three cup, maybe. Okay. Can you mm -hmm. see? Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, bigger. Bigger. Um, cool. Okay. About that big. So it's a generous little dish. Um, and I put caramelized onions right. and I'll put the relish and I'll put vegetables so that it's sort of a surprise every oh, bite. I that's yeah. yeah. Oh, and I then to make the That's topping work, great. I always mash the potatoes a little more with some more milk so that they're soft because they get glummy. And then just put that on top and maybe a little bit of Parmesan or a little smoked paprika. La, la, la. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That, yeah, that sounds just lovely. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah, I love this idea because I, I normally just throw out, okay, you just warm them up and throw out the, you know, the, uh, on the table and say, okay, kick what you want. But, but I love the idea of putting it together. <laughs> we really do. Make your own. Well, then you empty your fridge too, which yeah. is really nice. Yeah, yeah. that's that's nice. You yeah. know, you have 14 dishes of this and that in there, and everything's falling off, and you can't find anything. Yeah. Yes. Right. 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 Well, when this this started, I think I was married in 1965, and I think it was maybe that year that I started it. And um, but it's you you bake the yams. And then you get this, this, the oranges and cut the oranges in half, do some, and then you you mound the yeah, and then you you know season, heat up the yams with salt and pepper, and then you put them in the yam in the orange half, and you put them in muffin tins, and then you bake it, and Ooh. a little cinnamon and butter on top. So Ooh. that's always been one of the little special dishes, and. Um, but then it's like you, then my kids are doing it, you know, they're all different places, but they're making them like that. And, you know, it makes you feel good, makes you yeah. feel happy. It's tradition, mm -hmm. you know, as celebrating those traditions. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And that orange and sweet exactly. potato combination, that sounds delicious. Oh, man. Yeah. And you put the orange juice in the sweet potatoes. So, oh, yeah. when you're, you know, like when you put milk and mashed potatoes potatoes so that they're kind of they have a little tartness to them so it, it's it's really good mm, sounds delicious when we had a lot of vegetarian friends come i would cut acorn squash in half and roast those and then stuff them with walnuts all uh, walnuts and celery and onions and sort of cook that up a little bit and then we put kind of a hot sauce on it and some cheese and stuff. Mm. Pumpkin seeds and things like oh, that, and then that put those in bake. Oh my yeah. gosh, they're so good! Yeah, now you're making delicious. me hungry. I'm watching Anne eat. <laughs> and Sorry, you're eating <laughs> food I and like, shrimp oh, salad. I was hoping you couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to see you. It's fabulous. <laughs> Where was the shrimp salad? <laughs> oh, delicious. That sounds really I made good. Mushroom soup. You know, another thing I was thinking about, oh yeah, another thing I was thinking about is that we, what we did this year is that we put lights up outside early. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed a lot of other oh, nice. people are doing that. Yes. And, um, I, because, you know, not only do we want to cheer our inside of our house up, we want to cheer the outside up for our neighbors too. And I, my, my yes. suggestion is put them up as early as you can if you do it if you do it and then uh don't take them down until the equinox the vernal equinox <laughs> springtime because if you know we, our winters are dark and we need to see those bright yeah. spots this, you know in the winter time the lights are the, the lights retain the magic when you see the light so magic no matter what age you are it's just che very cheerful absolutely and now there's these led lights that can go indoors or outdoors and they're very inexpensive and they don't get hot and so i think that's really a good way to go too we have them um i have solar powered led lights in my garden that are draped attractively over my pink flamingos because mm -hmm. i live in a trailer home right so i have to have pink flamingos <laughs> My birthday present this year was a solar-powered pink flamingo with flowers on it that light up in the dark. <laughs> I think, you know, I think we can leave the lights on all year round. 
because right. really, you can always use some good cheer. Do you remember a couple years ago, or maybe 10 or 15 by now, they used to, a uh, uh, group of people would get together and plant 20 flamingos in your yard. You'd get up yes. in the morning yeah. and oh, all I all those. That. <laughs> yeah. that was fun. That would be my my dream of a wonderful thing to get flocked. I believe they call it flocked. <laughs> getting flocked. <laughs> that could be arranged. Yeah, getting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put that down, Aaron. <laughs> and there's going to be lots of pictures. Oh, right. We're going to put up on our chat. And, yeah. <laughs> well, it's fun. It's in fact we have the um. We were told by the city we have to rename our streets in here because the the apartments that were built up above us, the new condos, have the same street numbers, and you can't really do that. And so we're renaming ours, and my street is going to become Flamingo Way. <laughs> so it seemed to me that Flamingo Way meant that I needed to have a lot of flamingos, right? So <laughs> I have vampire flamingos <laughs> for Halloween, right? I think, look, I'm sure I can find Valentine flamingos for right. <laughs> I did like the I we saw the vampire <laughs> flamingos and we were very impressed. Yeah. So impressed. <laughs> Have you been to a lot of garage sales? <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Well, are, there, are there I don't know if people are having garage sales at this point, but well they probably are. That yeah. would be a good place to get them, you're right, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry. <laughs> So you know, I was I also that. thinking about video chatting. I mean, did anybody video chat yesterday with family or? I did with Zoom. Zoom, yeah. I, I mean, Yahtzee. Oh, that's right. You did the Yahtzee thing. That's so, that's so cool that you did that. I love that. Fun. Yeah. And, and uh, but, you know, it's also, you know, thinking about how we can use that. And uh, maybe uh, if, if, we, if you can learn how to share your screen, you could do favorite movie clips or music uh, clips and, uh, you know, doing multimedia things, if, you know. And the kids, if you ask your kids, they say, how can I share this? You could just send them a side of a, maybe a, a, a nice holiday song. They can put it up for you. And that's fun to share with the family together. So that multi- Well, the younger, the younger people in our family, were playing Yahtzee mm -hmm. on their computer. They didn't have to roll the dice. Uh, I, I have to I learn how to do that. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> My daughter and her husband and I were playing regular Yahtzee with a game in a box. And it was yeah. everybody was happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's connected. And I think that's so. Oh, that's so I bet you think bingo. Now, or how about yeah, uh, uh, Jeopardy? Wouldn't that be fun? Ooh, that Boy, would be. That would bring in, especially with the grandkids if they're still in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put, put like history up or something like that. Yeah. Mathematic problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. We're more at the knock knock joke stage. <laughs> <laughs> and those, are, those are magical. Those are wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Especially You're the ready. random point with us. <laughs> We're ready with some poop jokes, and that'll be next. That'll be next. Coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, anyhow, but there's some great holiday movies. You know, there's old and new. Um, but I want to recommend to you a brand new movie that came out. It's been a, it's on Netflix this year, and it's called Jingle Jangle. Hmm. And it is, it's like received 90 points from Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. And I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen the trailer and it looks wonderful. So that's kind of a fun way to spend the holidays is, you know, watching, you know, that it's a wonderful live or one of the 12 yes. different Scrooges. Because there's a lot of different <laughs> Scrooges. Maybe you could watch them all and compare them. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, so anyhow, and um, th but this jingle jangle, this is an alert. It is a musical, and not everybody likes musicals. But I've heard that the music in it is very good. So, oh, just, that'd be fun. Yeah, it's called Jingle Jangle, and if you can steal somebody's Netflix account, um, 
or, or you, you're signed on to your own Netflix account or you share a Netflix account. I, I strongly yeah. encourage you to watch that because that, that's, it's kind of a fun way. And that's kind of a tradition in our family. So it's kind of tradition, but it's also reimagined because it's, you know, it's something new. Yeah. yeah. So anybody else have some holiday movies well, they like? This, we were noticing this, we Go ahead, Bonnie. Excuse me. This was something we saw on uh, television recently, but it was, I think, the two younger girls who were in the Huxtables, was it, Lawrence? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they've, they've each done a, a holiday movie. And so the cast is, the casts are black. And they were talking about it. And... Um, they both said, you know, when we were growing up, there were no holiday movies that had anybody that looked like us. So they were, one is a kind of a romance story and um, uh, they looked, both looked like very nice movies. And I thought, well, that's good. You know, that's a good thing. So, yeah, get some diversity going. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jingle Jangle I is... Uh Primarily an F African American uh, a cast, Jingle Jangle is. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think John Legend wrote the music, which mm. is amazing, you know, because I love his music. So, yeah, so that's just something to throw out there. Yeah. And I interrupted you. You were starting to say something. Yeah, but. Bonnie, do you actually think I remember what it was? <laughs> Get with it, girl. <laughs> It'll come at two in the morning. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't remember either. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, it's no big deal. It's funny. I just, uh, I've become very random, I decided. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Yeah. It's like, I do that thing all the time where you go into the room and then you have to go back into the other room to think of what it was. And then you think of it and you have to write it down. And I think yes. we're all so distracted because there's just so much going on. And who would have thought it would be gone on this long that we'd still be, oh, that's what it was. I was going to say how funny it looks when you watch a film and you start saying, we don't have any masks on. <laughs> or like, <laughs> oh, <okay." laughs> And then you get, like, become acclimated to this. It's like, look how close they're sitting. I don't think they should be that close to each other. Right? <laughs> I know. It. I know. It. And you always, when you see that now or, or people interacting, you think, boy, that was a long time ago. Wow. That was a long time ago. That was like Can't January or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, oh. Anne, do you have any ideas for um, decorating? Something well, different, fresh, new. I don't know about different and fresh and new, but what we have been doing a great deal of is cutting out paper snowflakes uh -huh. and pasting them into the window, which is always fun, where you fold up the paper into a cone and then you can cut with scissors and make a shape and make, mm. uh, open it up and it's like lace. And my mm -hmm. granddaughter's mm -hmm. super into that. So we've been doing a lot of that. And then we decided- That's a good idea. I don't know. Holiday rather than- Maybe waiting until after Christmas, Thanksgiving. To do the snowflakes in the lobby here, yeah, yeah. We're trying to do not so much Christmas as such, but holiday. So it's about light. We're putting up lots of lights, and we're doing the snowflakes instead of anything particularly, you know, one way or the other. Because there's a lot of holidays around this time of year. There is, and I've been thinking a lot about how so many of the traditional older holidays were about the darkness and the light, right? So the darkest night would be mm -hmm. celebrated by extinguishing all the lights, all the fires and all the candles. And they would sit in the dark and tell stories and probably drink heavily and, uh, you know, right? And then the youngest kid the youngest <laughs> would light the something. But the youngest child would light a candle and then everybody would light their candle and then they'd light all the fires again. And then they would have a yeah. party. Um, but that sol solemnness is, is kind of wonderful. And I feel like that's something we could use a little more of. Um, thinking about, it isn't all yeah. skittles, you know, and beer. It's like, there's a lot going on and we should be willing to look at the dark a little bit and then celebrate the light as well. So. I agree. That's kind of my yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. 
I always think of darkness as being cozy too. I mean, kind of, kind of withdrawing into ourselves and getting introspective and getting kind of cozy with ourselves. And then, then as the light slowly comes on, you know, we can slowly share what we are or, you know, our essence or, or what we love with each other. So I, I love that dark and light, the yin and yang. <laughs> Absolutely. Like for, for my birthday, which was just not very long ago, I got, um, I was given solar powered tea lights. And it's so cool because you can put them on a windowsill and they get light all day. And then as the, the light drains out of the sky, you start to see these little flickers, like little tiny fires. And they come on in the dusk all by themselves. It's so sweet. I love that. Yes, absolutely. Now, now what is it? Solar, solar, what were they? Solar powered tea lights, you know, those like little fat candles. Oh, tea that... lights. Oh. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. I didn't like yeah. to use okay. the battery ones and throw them out, you know. So these are like, re... I mean, they're solar, so they're in... renewable infinitely, sure. basically. Um, nice. And they, nice. once you nice. turn them on and get them charged up, they just do it themselves. It's pretty sweet. Uh, where did you find it? I made it known to my family that that was what I wanted for my oh. birthday. And oh. so somebody found them on Etsy, apparently. I'll check out Etsy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Cool. Yeah. Well, I've been thinking about, like, I don't well, want we stuff. So yeah. last year, I, I asked I everybody to give up. handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs. And I got the coolest collection ever of all these wonderful handkerchiefs. Old ones from, you know, yard sales and thrift shops and new ones and some beautiful ones from Japan from one of my friends who said... All her guests from Japan always bring these gorgeous handkerchiefs, but she doesn't use them. So she gave me a bunch of them, and I think they're amazing. They're all gorgeous. Um, but, you know, think about something like that. And then my kids, my grandkids and I did a Mod Podge, which is like decoupage sort of, and we took old tissue boxes and we covered them in beautiful fabric. And then that's where all the, we have those around the house with real hankies in them. So if you need to blow your nose, you go to a tissue box. But oh, and so what that, a lovely idea! Isn't that sweet? Oh my God. They had so much what fun doing idea. it. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh my. Uh, I like uh, that reuse and you know recycle kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only do we think about ourselves, we have to think about Mother Earth too. Well, and I like the, thing yeah. the kids learning these lessons early so that they think about it themselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Our, um, we've been working on our Christmas presents, our holiday presents, and what we're doing is collecting seed from the garden and from the library gardens, and then we clean the seeds, and then we put them in little boxes, and those are going to be their presents for their family and friends. And it's like a garden in a box, and you can take a pinch of seeds and pull it around. And we've got like seven or eight kinds of seed at this point, and it, it's just really fun, but I love it. <laughs> They're realizing you can make and make and mend. You can make do and you can, yeah. you know, refresh. So that's been fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anne, I want to mm -hmm. recommend a book to you that Lawrence got for me for my birthday. And it's called One for the Blackbird, One for the Crow. And it's in Wyoming and it's two prairie families. But, um, you know, when you talk about the seeds, you know, they're bringing everything in and try. It's it's a it's a lovely it's a sad premise to the story, but it is extremely beautifully written, and it's a wonderful book. Is it a new? And book anybody, might, I just thought of you, but anybody might be interested. Would it be in the bookstore? Might even be in the yes. Library. And let me get. I'll get it. I'll get it uh, so I can get the author. Hold on a minute. Yeah, one for the black carry on. on. Carry on. Get the book. <laughs> <laughs> one for the crow. That sounds good too. I love when I'm writing a lot of stuff down. Oh, I like that idea. Oh, yeah. We had a. Um, I found a, a paperback copy of this book called Miss Rumphius. Have you any of you seen that one? About. Yeah. An older lady in Maine whose grandfather told her that part of her job in life was to make the world more beautiful. So she liked lupin flowers. 
and she ended up saving the seed of lupins and all her life everywhere she went she'd sow handfuls of lupin seeds and there were lupins everywhere in her neighborhood and oh. all around the places she visited and so we've been doing That's that too right who did that i can't see who wrote it okay it's Olivia Hawker, H A W K E R. Oh, okay. Cool. That looks good. Oh, oh there, yeah. Cool. Nice. Thank you. And the, the one character is a 13 year old girl who has great insights and understands about life and death. And I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, it's quite fascinating. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. <clears throat> I'm really enjoying it. Oh, that it. sounds beautiful. Yeah. I get a lot of books yeah. from the library. There's a free app called Libby and you can download audiobooks or textbooks. Um, and they have a ton of stuff and, and I don't buy a lot of books because um, I'm kind of on a limited income, but it's been wonderful to be able to get all sorts of things that way. Yeah, that, uh, are just so fun to read. Well, this book yes. that you're this book that you're talking about be satisfactory for um, a twenty five year old who has always been in special ed. Um, girl, is their reading? How is their reading skill? Probably about third, fourth grade. I think I think it would be too hard to read, but it's possible it could be on audio. If it's on audio, it would be lovely okay. for that person. It's it's a it's a story, and there there are a few characters, and each chapter title is the character's name, and so I think they could follow it. I think the person could follow it very well. That's a good idea. Thank you. That's a great idea. Yes. Hey, that, that was another thing, you know, <laughs> we always seem to get into books and literature when we, and it doesn't matter what we do. It's a, we always seem to get, and one thing that, you know, if you're on a Zoom call or a phone call is something to share with family and friends is a favorite poem or a favorite passage from a book. You know, there's nothing more that I love than Bob reading to me. I love it. I just love it when people read to me. And, um, and there was, a, I wanted to share today a poem. Um, it's called, from Kitty O'Mara. And um, she is co considered the poet laureate of the pandemic. And her, it's called her oh. prose poem, which begins with the line, and the people stayed home. And the people stayed home at Red Bull and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games like Anne and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their own shadows. And the people began to think differently. And the people healed. And in the absence of people living in the ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And then the danger passed, and the people joined together, and they grieved their losses, and made new choices, and dreamed new images, and created new ways to live, and healed the earth fully, as they had been healed. And that oh. just... Oh my God. And that's beautiful. Yeah. And, and I, boy, that's one that I'm sharing this season with my family. And I wanted to share it with you because I consider each one of you my friends. That just touched my heart. Yeah. It was one of those that I read it. And I don't know where I read Oh, I think it was in Yes Magazine. That makes sense. Oh, I love Yes Magazine. I wanted to tell you a short story. Uh, okay. I had a, a, we were totally quarantined. We can only stay on the property here. And that's been going on since last February. Yeah. So it's getting a little nervous out. And, but I had a dentist appointment at Winslow Green. And so I was driven over there and then the driver brought me back to the Madison house. I had not seen the lights on Winslow Way. It was so exciting. 
because we, yeah. because we can't go out. We can't, even though we're <clears> half a block <throat> from that. Um, so everybody, now they say, well, after Thanksgiving, we're going to take the van and drive around at night. And I'm sure they nice. will. Um, but it was such a surprise to just, there they were <laughs> in all their glory. Winslow Wade, look at yeah. Lovely. It's hard to believe how many seasons are coming. I have come and we've just stayed at home through them. You know, you're not out there walking the woods or walking the streets or seeing the lights. It gets kind of uh, tough sometimes. You have to have to really uh, work at staying interested in stuff. You know, you just can't. You miss what you don't know that you're missing it, you know. Well, one other thing is yeah. somebody at the First Congregational Church is ringing the bells every night at 8 o'clock on the dock. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, you can hear it all over this part of town. It's really mm -hmm. nice. I, I've gotten so I live on I live on Blakely Avenue, and I can hear them. Really? Uh, that, yeah, I look forward to them. If I listen, if I go out on the deck and listen closely, you know, I look at the clock and I think I'm going to go out there and listen to them. So yeah. it, if they're faint, yeah. but I can I hear them. I was thinking about doing a little tiny interview with the, the guys who are doing that um, for the splash. Do you think? Oh, that would be, be fun. I think a lot Perfect. of people don't know what, who it is or why they're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Isn't it mostly just one person? Mm -hmm. Well, it's Dave Beamer, except he's been gotten, and then Jim McPherson, oh. mostly. Um, and they take turns, or, you know, he's been doing it for... Dave started doing it because he said he wanted to support the first responders and the medical people, and he read about how that was happening in other places, and nobody seemed to be doing it here. So he started to do that, and then when he would go off on a... To, they have a mobile home and sometimes they drive around, you know, go off into the woods or something. And then Jim McPherson would take it over and do it. But they've been really faithful about it. And the one night the bell rope broke. Oh my. And I didn't know what to do. And I guess Jim had got a ladder and climbed up and put some string on it so he could at least ring the bell that night. And then the next day they <laughs> did the work to get it all fixed. But um, it was like, no, we can't have the bell rope broken. This is... <laughs> We still that'd, be yeah, that'd be a good story. Yeah, that'd be a good story for the splash. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll have a, I'll interview them about it. That's a good idea. So Sheila Kerwin uh, says that she goes out on her balcony because uh, she lives in Winslow Arms, and uh, is it eight o'clock in the evening? <coughs> yep. And yeah. she takes the bell out. Eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. But so her bell is. You can do it at home biggest. too if you've got a bell or you've got a kazoo or. <laughs> Or a drum, just go out and do it. You know, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> get out there and do it. So, but you know, another well, thing that's, the, that's so I important. think the church bells should be the first ones we hear. Absolutely, absolutely. But I, I think that another thing that it's and then unfortunately Anne can't do this. But another thing that um, I read about is the being able to get outside, and uh, um, and that you know we're going. Oh, the weather is pretty pretty bad. <laughs> But there was this old saying, it's, it's in the Scandinavia, they say there's no such thing as bad weather, but there's bad clothing. So if you, you layer up and just get out there or an umbrella, getting outside is, is really important. And um, yeah, I hate to say that in front of Ian. I am so sorry, Ian. But uh, I'm so <laughs> glad you can get out in that van, though. So we can go out and walk around the parking lot. That's not very exciting, but... no. At least you no. can get out. No, go yeah, go out there and make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, so that's that was that's, that's kind of the ideas that I had. Do you have any more ideas, Anne? Well, I what? just was thinking a lot about people who are kind who are isolated like that and and stuck inside and thinking, <clears throat> you know, I think I'd be tempted to call IVC and say. Could somebody drive me around to see the lights? Because well, I, I think bet Madison Madison House is going to do that. They were just waiting to get Thanksgiving gone. Right, but there's people who aren't in Madison House who are mm -hmm. still stuck in other places like that, and maybe that would be a way to do that. Or um, <clears throat> I know that there are people who will do, 
you know, give people a ride to the grocery store, or give people a ride to the pharmacy or the doctor's appointment or whatever. But I think for your mental and emotional health, it's really good to get out. And even oh, if yeah. you do just go out on a balcony or just yeah. walk around the parking lot a little bit, fresh air and just a different yeah. viewpoint, it seems valuable to me. Yeah. That's why so, I think it's I, healthy for everybody too to grow a few herbs on the windowsill or have a couple house plants. Um, you know, just growing things is sort of, it's like pets that don't need to go for a walk, right? Pets that don't eat your sugars. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, caring yeah. for things, is, like African violets are great because they're non-toxic, they're super easy, um, and they are happy with very little care, but they're cheerful little things, right? Or um, we have a lot of spider plants because yeah. the cats like them and they're not toxic for cats. And my grandkids say, no, Granny, they're waterfall plants because they make this cascade of babies and they like to play with them too right and it's like yeah. having indoor pets <laughs> plant pets when you talked about a poem I, I went and got a poem that I wrote and I can't remember exactly but I would like to share it oh I'd love this okay it seems a little bit more meaningful now actually than when I wrote it but life a simple smile a little wink can wait, raise my spirits, make me think of shared memories and times gone by, remembered softly with a sigh. Each day a fresh and winsome start to hold so to my heart, to life's secret, so they say. It isn't fame in a world that's fickle, it's to take one drop and make it trickle into a tiny moving stream, to float along, to live life's dream. There's nothing new in hackneyed thought. Life is, however, filled with fraught. And so to think so very small is perhaps to know it all. I'll be gentle, loving, unafraid, and live as if life were waylaid and can't go on until I know to stop, to look, to smell the rose. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's oh, nice. Nice. That is so Very beautiful. nice. That's so beautiful. Lovely. Thank you. Well, I think we're going to call it a, a day. And yeah. uh, it's it's been wonderful to see you all. And uh, hope to see you back here on Monday, next week.